Okay? So now let's move to the next aspect and try to understand how people interact with each other. How people interact with each other. How and why people interact with each other. So to understand how people and who, how and why people interact with each other, the very first principle we need to discuss is trade makes everyone better off. Trade makes everyone better off. Trade makes everyone better off. What do you mean by better off? You will be doing good. Okay. When you go for, okay. What do you mean by trade for that matter? Trade simply has been exchange of goods and services. Exchange of goods and services. And I would say, let's say, imagine my friends, we all had Akshay Patra. You know Akshay Patra? Yes. Or let's say Kamadenu. Okay. That particular holy cow, Lord Indra is said to possess. Okay, so that uh, Kamadenu, you simply say Kamadenu, okay, I need a Ferrari, there is a Ferrari present. You got it, my friends? I need a bottle of wine, you had a wine. Isn't it? Or let's say the genie. Isn't it? You got it, my friends? So let's say you have been gifted with uh, an Akshay Patra or Kamadenu. Do we really need to exchange anything in such case? No, there's no point because we have everything we want in life. No, we don't need money too. Isn't it? And we don't require any support of any other people. Okay, when I say trade makes everyone better off, does mean whoever is the one who participated in the trade, okay, either the giver or the buyer, I mean the seller or the buyer, both the parties do benefit. That's what I will say. That explains why we live in a concrete jungle like Hyderabad rather than living in Himalayas or in a deep jungle in Sri Salem forest. Because we are aware of the fact trade makes everyone better off. You get it, my friend? See, when you just catch cold, what do you do? Okay, when you've been caught with, okay, so when you've been affected with fever, viral fever, for that matter, or flu, what do you think you would be typically do? You don't just go to Narayana and then prepare for NEET and then just go to medical school and then graduate out of the medical school, turn to become a doctor and then treat yourself. Is it it? What do you simply think you do is you just approach a doctor. Why only a doctor? Why not a lawyer? Why you visit a doctor? Okay, when you've been caught with a flu, why not a lawyer? Why not an doctor for that matter? Why? Why only doctor? Pardon? His profession. So simple. So you believe he specialized in simply giving a solution to your problem. And you think you would be better doing, okay, by simply paying some 100 rupees or 200 rupees and ensure that you get treated for your disease. Isn't it? So that has been you believe, compared to me, compared to me, he is good at something. And I have an advantage. I have an advantage simply by paying 500 bucks for this particular doctor for ensuring my particular disease gets uh, treated. Get what I'm saying? So I believe it. And I believe I'm also better off. Rather than me appearing for need, go to Narayana and then prepare for need and then simply, okay, so go to medical school and then come out of it, okay, just to cure my flu. Isn't it? So I would think I would be better off. I do doing it good when I simply visit a doctor, pay some 500 bucks and I could ensure, I could get some relief sooner simply by paying 500 rupees. And why I insist only on doctor? Because I think compared to me and compared to the rest of the people, I had an advantage and this doctor has a comparative advantage because she is skilled or she happens to be a profession in simply trying to give solutions for such kind of problems. So it does mean every person sitting in the class do have some comparative advantage. Compared to advantage has been compared to the other people, you have some advantage. Okay, compared to you people, I know something about economics. And that's making life, your life easy. You are benefited, I am getting benefited. How you people are getting benefited, okay, that time you need to spend to understand the same concept. Maybe five, six hours is something you are able to get it in two hours. So that I am saving your enormous time. That explains why you people opted for coaching. Is coaching really mandatory for civil services? Is it, do you really think, how many of you really think coaching is very much essential? Okay, in fact, it's necessary and also sufficient. 
Is coaching necessary? I don't mean to say it's sufficient. Is coaching necessary to crack civil services? No, not at all. Coaching is not necessary. Okay, and don't simply say, I ended up saying it and don't simply ask the director, give me my feedback. Okay, Shiva has said, okay, it is, you felt it is necessary because in the absence of a coach, it might have taken you three years of your, okay, time to understand the entire syllabus. And one year ka opportunity cost as of now is 12 lakh rupees. Imagine on an average, if your salary happens to be 1 lakh rupees, spending 3, okay, three years on trying to understand history, polity and all these things, it might have taken you 3 years and you would be saving 2 years, 2 years matter 24 lakhs by simply opting for coaching by paying 1.5 lakhs. So that's how you end up thinking. So I forego 1.5 lakh, I can save 2 years of my time, 2 years of my time equal to 24 lakhs. So to save 24 lakhs, let me go and attend coaching for a okay, price of 1.5 lakhs. So I save time, isn't it? And this is not the case, my friends. So if your coaching happened in 3 years is your study and 1 year for the examination and you would be retiring as an undersecretary. But if you crack civil service at an younger age, you retire as a secretary. People only remember the secretary, isn't it? Who is a finance secretary? People remember. But who is a joint secretary? If you retire as a secretary, a joint secretary, under secretary in the animal husbandry department, no one cares. Even your neighbor is not aware you are an animal husbandry department secretary. Isn't it? People only realize today you might have seen the entire India knows who happens to be the defense secretary, who happens to be the home secretary. Because of this particular okay, issue of Jammu and Kashmir, every person in India is aware of who is a home secretary. But how many people in the class is aware of who is a secretary in animal husbandry department, who is the joint secretary in animal husbandry department? No, no, that's not it. People only know who is a chief secretary, who is a cabinet secretary. So if you crack exam at 30, you retire as a joint secretary or under secretary. If you crack exam at 25, you retire as a secretary. Isn't it? And just imagine how much you could make. And what kind of, isn't it, recognition you would be having. And in this case, you should crack the exam faster. In such case, you should not spend more time. And in such case, better to opt for coaching. So if you simply tell the Shrikan that I simply said, you should also explain. I also happen to give the logic why you should also go. Isn't it? Don't try to paint the other picture and make me bad. Isn't it? You get it, my friend. So the reason why you opted, simple, you're saving too much of time. So as a result, you are better off because you save time. And I'm better off, I'm getting paid. My life is happy, I'm happy, I'm getting paid. You are happy because I'm saving your time. That, that's what I'm going to say. And what is, okay, as a result, what's taking place? And that happened because of the result of the trade taking place, the exchange of my service. For the money, you are getting paid. Okay, you'll be paying for me. Get what I'm saying? That's what I'm going to say. Trade makes everyone better off. So it's not only when it comes to the interaction between a lawyer and a doctor and an architect. It could also be equally true when it comes to between two nations. Okay, had about something called free trade. These days, many of you had about the debate between free trade and protectionism. What do you mean by free trade? Free trade simply does mean trade without any barriers. Without any barriers. Okay, get it my friends. Free trade doesn't mean trade without any price attached. It does mean trade without any barriers. Okay, and what is a barrier? Barrier is any hindrance or anything that happens to be an obstruction when it comes to trade between two nations. Okay, so when you have too many barriers, okay, and where you disgrace trade with other nations, then in such case you are said to practice something called protectionism. Free trade versus protectionism. This is a topic that's of highly debated, okay, in the recent past because some believe free trade would really benefit everyone. Some believe no free trade is really going to hurt some people at the cost of other people. Okay, so that's the reason people support protectionism. So that's the basic debate. We will just look into it in detail. But let me discuss something. Okay, so when I say trade makes everyone better off, I just given an example on an individual basis. But let's take the case of India and United States of America. So what is that comparative advantage? The comparative advantage we have compared to that of USA, we have abundant labor, surplus of labor. We have abundant labor, surplus of labor. That's the basic reason you can have a good haircut at 200 bucks. Isn't it? So for 200 bucks, you can have a very good haircut in India. And for 20 rupees, you can get your pair of clothes washed and pressed. But you don't get the same service in United States of America. You get what I'm saying? For 20 rupees, which is almost on an average, is simply 30 cents. For 30 cents, you cannot get your clothes washed and pressed in United States of America. 
200 has been on an average three dollars. For three dollars, you cannot have a haircut there. Even they they doesn't accept it as a tip, isn't it? So that's what it is. So our advantage lies in cheaper, abundant, skilled pool of labor. That's the basic reason. All the way from United States of America, Microsoft has floated its second largest development center in Cyberabad. It's not law on people of Telangana. It's simple. That's where these Microsoft people can hire large number of engineers, okay, who are ready to serve Microsoft at a cheaper price. And these people who are coming and serving this Microsoft at a cheaper price, relative happens to be more talented than an average American. Isn't it? For the past eight years, you might be aware that Spellby competition is being won by. The NRS itself, isn't it? So that's been on an average. Our kids are better in English spellings. Than compared to a native American citizen, so that we have been far excelling than compared to any average American guy. You get it, my friends? So that's what is. The, okay, we will be better off. So look at it. The Americans are better off. So the advantage. Imagine if Microsoft, if Microsoft people develops the entire software only in United States of America. Just imagine, you Microsoft has no other subsidiary across the world, and Microsoft writes every piece of okay, every line of its code only from the engineers that's been employed in USC. And since the average cost, okay, the labor cost or the wages of labor in United States of America is being far higher, what happens to be the Microsoft license? I mean, the license for Windows, it would be much higher. You cannot simply the license as of now. You can buy a license at five thousand five hundred bucks. But you don't get the same license when Microsoft, okay, the engineers in United States of America writes the software because the labor wages happens to be very high. So if this particular Windows license happens to be not more than okay, not five thousand five hundred, if it happens to be fifty five k, then most of Indians would have gone for a pirated version. Pirated version. Pirated version. And that too, okay, people would not be simply buying this license software. People, most poor dunia would be thinking of going for a pirated version. Get it, friends? Or else, people would be looking for some kind of alternative, okay, operating system. Because Microsoft is simply, okay, it's uh, patented by the Microsoft. But these days, you can have an open source. You can have a Linux. You can have a, any other kind of open source operating system. So, like Ubuntu. Okay, people might be going for it. So, my sales would come down. I could simply increase my sales, provide, and if I could reduce my cost of production. How could I reduce my cost of production rather than employing my American engineers? Let me go on simply employ an Indian engineer who is willing to serve, okay, 24 by 7 at 1 lakh rupees per month. So as a result, the American company would be able to produce Microsoft software or Windows software, okay, at a cheaper price. And once the software happens to be cheaper, Indians could buy, Chinese could buy, and pura dunia can buy at 5,500 rupees. Everyone can buy a software license. At fifty-five thousand rupees, there's no point in buying because the PC costs twenty thousand and the operating system costs fifty-five thousand. Doesn't make any sense. If the PC costs thirty thousand and simply the operating system comes with three thousand rupees, that's where it would be okay incentivizing the people to buy a licensed software version, or else people go for a pirated version. How could I increase sales of my particular product? Simple. I have to reduce my cost. And how could I do it? Simply employ the labor of India rather than American. So as a result, now American can produce this software at a cheaper price, and they can sell large quantity. I mean, large number of licenses, and they can generate more revenue, isn't it? So the result is this American company makes more money, and this Indian okay, and our here, pay more labor would be employed. So they benefit, and we benefit. That's why I say trade makes everyone better off. So they benefit, and we benefit. That's the basic reason. If you happen to cross check. The luggage that your brothers and sisters would be carrying to United States of America. So when they pack up the luggage, have you ever seen what? Okay, what are the okay the baggage? Many of your brothers and sisters might be flying, isn't it? Very frequently when they happen to be leaving to USA, you just simply cross check that particular baggage. That typically consists of the generic medicines, low price editions of books, isn't it? Okay, how many of you happen to come across this particular book called Digital Logic Design by Morris Manu? You know Morris Manu, Digital Logic Design, Electronics and Communications or Computer Science. No one in, from Electronics and Communication. How many of you from Electronics and Communications, Electrical, and then Computer Science? Okay, do you have a topic by name Digital Logic Design? Huh? The flip flops, J.K. flip flop, isn't it? Do you have it? 
And what is that book you followed? Maurice Menu, isn't it? So how much it cost in India? Hardly some 520 rupees. But United States of America, it, is, it costs you $82. $82. You get it, my friends? So it's a low price edition. So that's the basic reason. For that matter, see, the, that Morris Menno in United States of America do comes with beautiful colors and beautiful. It's okay, we don't get the same kind of it. Okay, sab kuch, every flip-flop looks the same, black and white. But if you look at that particular book, it really is going to be okay, too good and too okay, interesting to read. Get your friends? In fact, that's my favorite subject. That's the reason I still remember the author. Okay, so get what I'm saying? So that's what it is. So most of you brothers, when they fly, what do they take? They don't buy Micromax mobile here and take it to USA. Isn't they buy this okay pulses, okay belt, leather goods, all cheaper clothing and all these things. You get it, my friends. Recently, I have come across one of my friend has come back all the way from United States of America to India only to have tooth implant. Just for tooth implant, he has come to India. I asked him how really, isn't it? Because you look at the flights, he said, TK, including that. Include the money I forego by simply taking a leave for the next 15 days. Get my friends, I could still save something. You get my friends, that's what it is. So trade makes everyone better off. The reason is simple, he is flying UK, okay, isn't it? So that's the basic reason. So the advantage we have compared to Americans, we have abundant cheaper labor. And the advantage Americans have compared to we Indians is they have abundant capital and advanced technology. And if these two nations remain isolated and they don't interact, they would keep their capital and technology, but they don't have labor to okay, produce an efficient quantity of goods and services. And we have our own labor, but we don't have a capital and technology. We cannot simply optimize the utilization of these resources. So henceforth, they would not be doing good and we would not be doing good. But if we come together and these people end up investing their capital, and bring in the technology and invest and employ the resources of my country. What happens? Large number of Indians would be employed. Large number of Indians would be earning decent amount of money. That would really to, to really leads to multiplier effect in the economy. What happens if Microsoft comes to India? That would pull some other ancillary industries. Okay, in and around. Okay, Microsoft. That leads to okay, increase in demand for housing. That increase in demand for real estate. That increase in demand for hospitality. That increase in demand for automobiles, isn't it? So that's the advantage we have. And that could only happen when there is a trade taking place. And that's what I mean to say. Trade makes everyone better off. Get it, my friends? See, see, as of now, we are consuming large variety of goods and services since morning to evening. Get it, my friends? The reason why we end up visiting Alan Soli or simply for that matter a clothing store, why don't we just keep on weaving our own cloth? Isn't it? Just imagine if you are trying to be self-sufficient. For everything, you are cultivating your own food, you are weaving your own clothes, okay, you are manufacturing your own mobile phone, you would not be having the same kind of decent living. Get you know what I am saying? We all had a very comfortable living by this time. But imagine a situation, you have to weave your own clothes, stitch your own clothes, isn't it? You have to cultivate your own cotton. So starting from cultivation of cotton to designing your clothes, everything you have to do, imagine how complex the life would be. Get you know what I am saying? Imagine how complex life would be, but don't you think the life has been really, okay, highly comfortable these days? And how could we have a, such a comfortable life? Okay, it's simple. By simply exchanging, okay, what we are good at with people, what they are good at. Isn't it? I have some 500 bucks and I believe I will be good at simply visiting a doctor to get my disease cured. Get what I'm saying? So I'm better off and the doctor is better off. The reason he makes money and I have come up with a solution for my problem. That's what I mean to say, trade makes uh, everyone better off. And since trade makes everyone better off, I mean both the parties, I mean the buyer and the seller, the reason why people support free trade is that simple, they believe trade is going to be a win-win game. So these people who believe trade is a win-win game because every party, whoever participates in trade is going to be better off. So that's the basic reason these particular school of, I mean, those economists who support the ardent supports of free trade, they do increase more trade between the nations. For that to happen, they discourage any barriers, anything that discourages the movement of goods and services in and out of the country. So lesser is the barrier. It's as simple as that. Lesser is the height of the wall surrounding your hostel. Have you been in boarding school? Have you been in a boarding school? Any point of time in your okay, okay, academic career? No. None of you. 
ओके प्लस वन प्लस टू में एटलीस्ट इन ए बोर्डिंग स्कूल इफ यू बी इन ए रेसिडेंशियल बोर्डिंग स्कूल माई फ्रेंड्स हायर इज द हाइट ऑफ द वॉल लेसर इज द नंबर ऑफ जम्प इन एंड आउट ऑफ द हॉस्टल lesser is the height of the wall more would be the frequent jumps and there would be better trade of taking place isn't it so the number of movies you watch the number of second shows you watch isn't it so you are lucky you now been in but i have been starting from my kg to pg i have been in a boarding school that's the basic reason my friends i learned my jumping in my plus one because it's a six foot wall isn't it and we are not allowed to move out of the hostel by 6 o'clock and then if there is a new movie release and my friends are watching and i am really losing the opportunity and the next day they come and simply debate about it i am simply not able to participate in the debate of that corner movie so hence for i used to simply do the same agar if the lesser is the height of the wall there would be more frequent movement so there would more trade taking place but higher is the wall lesser movement that has displaced trade okay get it that's what is the barrier is okay these days you might have come across this americans are not happy or at least trump is not happy for too many chinese goods flooding american markets what did he do he ended up simply saying i am going to erect a barrier how did he erect a barrier by increasing the customs duty tariff tariff is one of the many kinds of barrier a barrier could be any different types okay one in terms of tariff i am simply saying that any chinese good in my country would attract a very high customs duty His intention is to discourage sale of Chinese goods in his markets, and to encourage India, okay, American products to be sold more in the American markets. Is that it? So that is what simply is said to be called a protectionism. And how do China retaliate? Simply, Chinese have done the same thing. If you increase tariff on Chinese goods in American markets, we do the same thing for American products in Chinese markets. And that's what is these days very popularly known as a trade war. So these nations war at the war. and what kind of war there is a trade war so you simply discourage my products i would discourage your products in my country i would discourage your products in my country that's the basic reason they are set to be at logger heads and that's what's popularly known as these days as a trade war but my question is how many of you believe in free trade and is free trade really going to benefit the nation or simply you think protectionism is always good protectionism simply does mean an act of discouraging foreign trade just to promote and protect your domestic industry promote and protect your domestic industry let's say if i simply open my market and simply tell to the world anyone producing any damn thing is free to sell in my country and i am not going to discriminate you as a indian seller and a foreign seller if this lady who happens to be a german automobile name is german automobile company bmw mercedes audi okay they all happens to be a german companies so imagine if my government says it doesn't matter to me i'm not going to discriminate this lady who comes from germany and sells his bmw okay and this lady who represents tata automobiles and sells it i'm not going to discriminate okay you can freely sell irrespective of where you manufactured whether it's a bmw audi or ferrari or simply get my friends or simply that fear it or for any other gadi i don't discriminate Anyone is free to sell any product he made across the world in my country. I am not going to discriminate. The advantage we all have, we had a wide variety and wide access, isn't it? And too much of goods market, so we get at a cheaper prices. That's the advantage of the consumer. But what happens if the market is flooded with too many varieties, and my domestic industry would be adversely affected? Because my Tata Mobiles really doesn't know to produce an efficient automobile compared to what this German skin produces. Germans are known for their experience expertise in precision. That's the basic reason. Okay, large number of luxury okay mobiles, automobiles happens to be more or less from Germany segment. Get it, my friends? So, but my Tata really cannot match up with the technological advancement they have. Hence, for my people would be at a disadvantage. So, people prefer more of Volkswagen, more of BMW, more of Ferrari, more of something else than compared to okay, more of my Indian automobile. So, how am I going to protect my Indian automobile company? It's simple. Discourage any foreign producer selling his product in my country. And how would I do it? Erecting a barrier. And how could I erect a barrier? Simply impose a tariff. That's the basic reason. As of now, in India, we have a 180 percent customs duty on a fully built-in automobile vehicle. So, if you want to borrow, okay, bring in a fully built-in, I mean, fully assembled automobile which has been assembled outside India. Okay, if it is costing you one crore, you need to pay 180, 1.8 crore as a customs duty to the government. So, what is the intention of government of India to discourage purchase of a fully built-in automobile, okay, outside India? so indians intention is to encourage okay automobiles to be purchased which is made in india 
That's the intention. And that's how the government practices uh, protectionism. But my question is, is protectionism good or bad? Or is free market, is, you want to think about free market protectionism. We will be having a very good debate later point of time. But with that particular basic knowledge you think, you have, what do you think could be the best choice? Free trade or protectionism? It has to be balanced between these two. So why? Why do you mean? Okay, so you understood what is a protectionism? Protectionism is simply a practice wherein the governments try to protect the domestic industry by trying to reduce the foreign competition. How could you reduce the foreign competition? See to it they don't enter your markets. How could you do it? Erect a barrier. See if you erect a barrier and discourage any foreign product being sold in your markets, that leads to loss, okay, foreign competition and the market is now only available only to your domestic manufacturers and since the market is at the disposal of the domestic manufacturers, they can get advantage out of it. So that's how you try to protect the domestic industry. But if your market is open to foreign products, the product could be made elsewhere and it's being sold in your country, isn't it? So the employment goes to some other country and you happen to consume and too much of competition would lead to falling demand for your domestic industry and they would not be making enough money and that way to fall in jobs in your country. And that's the basic reason people support protectionism. It is to protect the domestic industry. But some people say trade is always a win-win game. Both the parties get benefited by going for a trade and handful people do support lesser barriers and more amount of free trade. My question to you with the understanding you have, do you really think protectionism is bad? And he is saying there has to be balance. What kind of balance? You have to support free trade when there is no domestic demand. There is no demand, then how come there is a point in foreign gold coming into my country? Demand in Aito, there is no point in foreign gold coming into the country. Domestic market, I mean there is no domestic producer. In such case, he is simply, okay, in those goods where we are not able to produce good, he is simply asking let there be a foreign. But imagine if a foreign good already exists and simply floods your market, then there would not be any opportunity later point of time for any domestic entry. That's bad. Isn't it? Let's say today I don't produce any luxury automobiles. No, no Indian company produces an SUV. Just imagine. And I opened my market for SUVs by foreign companies. And now these foreign companies ended up simply flooding my markets with their cheaper SUVs. Okay, so it does mean that today I don't produce. Today my domestic industry, the Tata automobiles and Maruti Suzuki are not good at producing an SUV. Henceforth I have opened my market. And the market is flooded with these foreign brand SUVs. Okay, by your logic, that would really inhibit in future my domestic industry would not be able to come up with a decent SUV. The reason is the market has been already flooded with the, the cheaper SUVs. By that logic, okay, it would really inhibit our choice of simply entering into an SUV market. Get what I'm saying? Today I'm not good at it, but it doesn't mean that tomorrow my companies would not be able to do it. Okay, so let me ask you a different question. How many of you believe in more competition than compared to less competition? So when you raise hands, you believe in more competition? Yes, that applies to civil services also. Isn't it? So why is it always competition good? Ah, yes. Just imagine Modi sub today has promised you. Just imagine Modi sub today has promised you my dear friends, I really understand the pain of attending class early in the morning 6.30. Okay, when 50% of Indians are still at bed, you people are simply attending academic class. I am very happy, I am impressed and I am ensuring 2021, 2020, okay, other than you people, no one would be allowed to take the prelims. It's my promise. You would only be people. And you know the selection criteria typically my friends, when it comes to, for 100 vacancies, if there are 100 vacancies, into 2.5 is selected for personality test and into 13, 100 into 13 is selected for your mains examination irrespective of how many people take up the prelims. That's the reason prelims is said to be called as a round of elimination. It's not a round of selection. Okay, 100 ke liye 1300 would be allowed to take up mains, 1000 ke liye only 13000 would be allowed to take up mains. That's it. Following. Get your friends, but I can imagine there are thousand vacancies and Modi sub already made a promise. You hundred are the only people who would be allowed to take a prelims. There are thousand vacancies, hundred people taking a prelims. It has been for every person there are ten vacancies. You're damn sure you are into the list. 
Isn't it? So if Modi sir today makes a commitment, I bet, I ensure, it's the Prime Minister of India who is making a commitment, I would ensure other than you people, no one would be taking problems in the next year, then what do you think could be the scenario next from next day? None of you attend classes. The reason is, you're already into the list. Only thing you need to do, go to the examination hall, write your hall ticket number and just simply sleep. <laughs> Don't try to do anything because it might lead to negative marking. Of course, even negative marking you would be selected. The reason is, 1000 vacancies say, 13,000 are required and there are only 100 people taking, you are already into the list. So no competition, you tend to becoming lethargic. Complacency develops, unproductive. You are really diamonds. Okay, the more we polish, the better would be a shine. But if we simply end up saying, no, no, anyway, you don't require, isn't it? We don't really require diamonds. We don't need a competition. So though you happen to be diamond, okay, you don't get polished yourself and you don't allow us to polish yourself. Then you remain as that particular raw stone, isn't it? So it does mean that would really have no strength and no value when it happens to be the raw gems. Get what I'm saying? That's what the case is. Competition is always good. Either when it comes to markets or in individual aspects, because that brings the best. Isn't it? So take the case, my friends. I don't know, since you are lucky people, you've been born after 1990. Okay, where India attained an economic freedom in 1990s. Get it, my friends? Okay, so you might not be really able to understand, but you can ask your parents. When your parents of your age, when your parents of your age, when it comes to automobile in my country, okay, in our country, there used to be only simple Mahindra ka Jeep. Mahindra Jeep. And there used to be a company called Fiat. An Italian company used to produce Premier Padmini. Okay, small compact car. And Hindustan Motors, owned by Aditya Birla Group, used to produce Ambassador. And the only luxury car in those countries, in those days, a car called Contessa. Hindustan Motors car, Contessa. Okay, so those days, my friend, literally, I still remember. When I am at somewhere at a very young age, if there is a car that comes to my village, until the car leaves my village, Okay, Pura people, almost all the young kids like me used to run off the car, 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 isn't it? Because that's a really great thing, looking at a car directly, that's so in Ambassador Week. Because those days it used to be very few. But these days, isn't it? So every alternate day, every festival, there is a launch of new vehicle. Following my friends, and look at it, those days Ambassador really, see, okay, it used to weigh around 2.5 tons. 7 km per liter is the mileage and it used to be costing around 4 to 5 lakhs. So 4 to 5 lakhs in 70s and 80s is a very huge amount of money. Adjusted inflation that's somewhere around 30 lakhs. So with 30 lakhs as of now you can purchase a low class B, okay, Mercedes, BMW. Isn't it? You get it my friends. And this particular variant, okay, variant of BMW is much more efficient than compared to the ambassador in those days. And what led to this kind of thinking is simple, okay, is simple, too much of competition. You remember I said 20 years back mobile phone used to be twice the size of walkie talkie. 30,000 rupees used to be the price. Only incoming and outgoing, only calls. Those days initially used to have a pager for messaging service. Have you, do you remember? I mean are you aware of the fact there is a pager? It's for a messaging service and then you have a mobile phone only to receive and simply make a call. And that too used to be very high costly. Doesn't it? Okay now you can look at it every damn guy has a smartphone. Though the people are not smart they had a smartphone. Isn't it? So that's it. So what is the reason behind this? It's not that, okay, technology, see, technology, but the reason is simple, too much of competition. In fact, when it comes to mobile phones these days, it has become a, okay, cottage industry in China. Like India made, typically Indian women, when they're cooking food, they will also keep switching sweaters. Similarly, in China, I guess, the women while cooking food, they also keep assembling mobile phones. Isn't it? Because you have seen the market is flooded with Oppo, Vivo, XYZ, nonsense, isn't it? Front camera ke liye ek mobile phone tha, isn't it? Music ke liye ek mobile phone, rare and cake, okay? So that's how the market is flooded. But initially when the mobile phone entered, it's only Sony, Ericsson and only Nokia. There used to be a mobile phone, I don't remember, the Nokia. If you simply try, okay, simply throw that mobile phone to a guy and if it hits that guy in a proper place, he would die. <laughs> Okay, what's a uh, 3115 something, the very first variant. And if it makes a sound, even my friends, one kilometer, okay, somewhere away, the person who is sleeping one kilometer away would also wake up. That's the sound it used to be. 
But that's the case, my friends. And what is the result? Simply, you cannot say it's only technological advancement. That's not the case. The reason why such a technological advancement has taken place is because of too much of competition. It is because of a too much of competition. Okay, so when there is a huge competition, that obviously leads to efficiency. That's what I'm saying. That obviously leads to efficiency. Following? So that's the basic reason. Okay, people do simply say no for protectionism. Like I don't mean to say that the government should never protect this domestic industry. So protectionism is something, okay, government protecting domestic industry is something similar to how the parents raise their kids. Should the parents have to take care of the kids? Yes or no? Should the parents take care of the kids? Yes or no? Yes, but they should take care of the kids only until the kid attain a particular stage. And they are responsible to groom the kid in such a way by attaining a particular age, the kid would be able to withstand himself. And in fact, the kid now would be able to take care of the parent. That's how the parent has to groom the kid. But if the parents do make the kid a promise, beta, you don't worry, you don't go to school, you don't simply read anything. Okay, I, you have too much of money accumulated by your grandfather. Okay, you really don't need to work hard. So the kid becomes complacent, lethargic, fit for nothing like Rahul Gandhi. So even at 40, 50, he expects support from his pib. Isn't it? So if someone is expecting a support even at 40, 50, then there is something wrong in the kid and also in the parents. Similarly, the government has to groom the domestic industry in such a way, over a period of time, they should be able to compete with that foreign markets and they would be able to withstand the competition. If the domestic industry has been issued, hey, look, you would not be okay, experiencing any competition, then the domestic industry tends to become lethargic. That's the basic reason Hindustan Motors from the very first year produced ambassador. Somewhere in 1972, I guess. By the time it closed the factory in 2012, ambassador has never experienced any change in shape. Isn't it? The same is the car they used to produce. By the time they started producing an automobile to the time 2012 they closed the factory, ambassador never experienced change in anything. The reason is no competition. In those days, since there is no competition for automobile manufacturers, there are hardly three to four companies producing automobiles. Since there is no competition, people have no choice. If you want to buy a car, you only have one option, that's ambassador. That's it. So if I'm pretty much sure that in this country, people are consumers have no choice, then whatever I produce car, simply I can attach two bullocks and then four wheels and say, this is a car. And you have no alternative. Isn't it? So that's how ambassador never have experienced any efficiency, any change, until unless the market fell away too much of competition. And when there is a too much of competition, what happened in 2012, in a highly competitive environment, you should either perform or you would perish. You should either perform or you would perish. So ambassador perished. And Tata's performed. So they were able to withstand the competition. Mahindra was able to perform. They were able to withstand the competition. Okay, Suzuki was able to okay, perform. They are able to withstand the competition. But these people, ambassador, who has not been updated, okay, and because of the competitive environment, they ended up perfect. Anyway, friends, so in good old days, okay, there used to be also a company called HMT, Hindustan Machine Tools, where the government of India, okay, it's a government-owned company, Hindustan Machine Tools, used to produce tractors, Watches also, HMT watch, okay, all wind refrigerators, okay, Bharat Electronics, okay, so BHL, okay, BL, Bharat Electronics Limited also produced, used to produce a, okay, uh, sorry, ECIL. These people used to produce a color television set. There used to be a TV called Ika EC TV, okay, very popular uh, color TV. That used to be of this much size, that's a CRT tube, cathode ray display. And it also used to have a doors. So you should pull the doors, right side above picture at the left side above sound at the. <laughs> That's the kind of TV. But no longer you don't find it. Okay, get what I'm saying? Okay, you don't find it. These days you have plasma, you have simply OLED displays, isn't it? And no more ECL producing still TVs. The reason is simple. It's not competitive, it's not efficient. Then you have to usually opt out of the markets. Isn't it? So as a result, we people have better variety, better options, and that's what's the basic reason. People say competition is always necessary, and in fact, it's always good, and henceforth, there should not be any barriers. But the government, why should he has to protect it? It's simple. You should groom the kid in such a way he would be able to withstand the competition. 
So it is your response to protect the industry. But how do you protect the industry? Is in such a way, once you open your competition, once your markets, they would be able to withstand and they would be able to generate some revenue, withstand the competition. That's how the government has to groom the domestic industry. Like the parents groom the kids. Do you understand? So it is up to the responsibility of parents to groom the kids. But only to a certain extent. Do you know what I'm saying? So if you leave your kids, many a times you happen to see in Western citizen, Western Hemisphere. Isn't it? So Western Hemisphere is an individual centric society. So there people would be saying, darling, your children, my children, playing with our children. <laughs> Isn't it? It's an individual centric society. But we are a family centric society. You might have seen mother and father sacrificing their needs and wants for the benefits of the kids. But that's not the case. It's an individual centric society and hence for they say it doesn't matter to my kids and your kids and our kids. It's between you and me and myself for that matter. Isn't it? So you can also see single parent family and parent less family too. Get it my friends? So that's an individual centric society. So that's the basic reason. That's a, okay. They are, I ended up saying they are consumer centric and that's a okay, highly spendthrift society. Following, but that's not the case. The way you groom, so you simply leave the kids somewhere at 10 or 11, that's not going to, that's the basic reason you have more of drug addicts. If you've been to Miami, isn't it? So 10, I mean 9 in 10 is a drug addict. I mean, I simply see along the eastern coast of United States are very much dear to Mexico. You can see large number of this, okay, rotten kids. The reason is simple, no proper parental care. Too much of parental care is also bad. Let's say you parents take care of you so much. Okay, these days I might have seen as soon as the kid touches something, then simply she would be rubbing that particular, what do you think, say? Uh, sanitizer. sanitizer. So in such case, if that kid is being applied too much of sanitizer, he would be develop, not developing any resistance. Let's say if the parents take care of so, you people so high, as soon as you come back from school, you would be locked in a room, no TV, no mobile phone, no girlfriend to chat, nothing to do with it, and that's all being raised after 25, and you end up simply saying, my kid has no okay girlfriend, he doesn't use Twitter, he doesn't use Facebook, he doesn't watch TV, then I would say, why the hell you had a kid? <laughs> Isn't it? You get it, my friends? A kid has to play, a kid has to make a mischief, a kid has to learn something, but the kid has to be groomed in such a way, he will to take care of his parents, so at 25, and he will be able to withstand the problem. That's how the parenting has to be. And that's how the government has to okay, protect this domestic industry. But I simply tell my domestic industry, you would be the only people forever producing automobile. I would not allow any other people to produce an automobile. They turn to become complacent. And as a result, the market experiences flooding of inefficient okay, goods that discourages consumption. Get what I'm saying? And that's what's the basic reason I said trade makes everyone better off. The buyer and also seller. And you remember, okay, keep it in mind, trade only takes place when both the parties are happy. Yes or no? If I go to an outlet, isn't it? And like this product, let's say I have been to that stationery store and like this marker. And I cannot tell this shop owner, I like this marker, you should give it to me at one rupee. Because I liked it. No. Isn't it? I could only take this marker. And why am I paying only 20? Let's say I ask this lady, but how much would you like to pay? Okay, I mean, how much you are expecting for it? She says 200. Then even though I like it, I don't buy it. The reason is, I think it's not worthy buying. Because I don't derive satisfaction paying 200 for it. So only when I'm happy paying 20 for it, because I'm happy okay, for what I'm paying, for what I'm getting. And she's happy for what she's getting, for what she's uh, exchange. She is happy as a producer, I mean seller, and I'm happy as a buyer, and that's where trade takes place. Sir. And that's what I mean to say, trade benefits uh, everyone. Following.